The first hurricane of the 2023 Atlantic hurricane season has formed. Good evening, everybody. Mike Naso here with the latest on the tropics. As of 11 p.m. Saturday night, July 22nd, when we take a look at the Atlantic Basin, a few features. First of all, a hurricane, Hurricane Don. We had a subtropical storm and then a tropical storm, Don, that was spinning out there, and it meandered for a few days. It was very weak, but it has strengthened all the way up to a Category 1 hurricane. It is the first hurricane of the season. We have an invest area that was showing a bit more life uh, in the last 12 hours. It's kind of uh, pooped out a little. Nevertheless, the models bring this towards the west. We have some thunderstorms there blowing up along the Gulf Coast. A lot of lightning there in Louisiana. But let's take a look at our hurricane. This is Hurricane Don. As of uh, 11 p.m. Atlantic Standard Time, it was at 41.4 north, 49.6 west. Winds of 75 miles per hour, so it's a minimal hurricane a Category 1, and it's moving north-northeast at 14. It should weaken to a tropical storm and then eventually become a post-tropical cyclone up in the North Atlantic. Land masses will not have to worry about it. It doesn't have a very large expanse of winds. Nevertheless, it's obviously a hurricane. Here's the satellite imagery. The eye earlier was much better defined. However, the eye is what gave it away. But look at how warm the cloud tops are. Cold cloud tops are indicative of a stronger storm. That's when you look for these deep reds and grays. This is blue and yellow, so the cloud tops are not very cold. And a lot of the satellite estimates are not as strong as Don actually is, but it's obviously a hurricane. And so the hurricane is going to continue to move in that direction out to sea. We won't have to deal with it, but it's still a hurricane. Now, part of the reason Don has been able to strengthen is that we have very warm waters in the Atlantic. Very warm. If you look at the, ocean, uh, the oceanic heat content here, Don is up here and it was able to become a hurricane. Imagine what it would have done in a good environment down in this very warm water. We've had water temperatures, goodness, around the Florida Keys upwards of 100 degrees. And the rule of thumb is that to get a hurricane, you need water temps of 80 degrees. So if you're talking 90, 95 degrees, Oh my goodness, you get a hurricane in a good upper-level environment, forget about it. Now we had that system in the Atlantic I mentioned, Invest 95L. In the Atlantic, whenever there's a system that's not a depression, but it's something that could develop, they want to run models on it to see where it might go, they name it uh, 90 to 99. So we alternate 90, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 90, 1, 2, 3, and they put an L for Atlantic. Uh, in the Eastern Pacific, it's E and so on and so forth. So this is 95L, and uh, the invest should continue to move almost straight west. And honestly, I'm not impressed with it. It really looked a lot better uh, 12 to 24 hours ago. There's almost not even discernible on the satellite, but it is still there. There is still something there, but with this wind shear in front of it, I'm not looking for any development, I don't think. The Hurricane Center has it at a moderate chance, but it had been high, and the long-range models were showing it doing something, and then they all backed off. So I'm not that concerned about it. This wave south of the Cape Verde Islands there, this has more life to it, and I believe it was the 0Z or possibly the 12Z run of the GFS and Euro showed this making it all the way to the Caribbean in about seven to ten days time so we're not there yet we're not in august or september when things get active but we do have a hurricane up in the north atlantic very far north very unusual we do get july hurricanes we get them up north but still it's indicative that we've already had uh, an active season so far and more to come now from dr philip klotzbach at csu colorado state university colorado state university has always been, at least in my time as tracking hurricanes, 20 plus 25 years, they've always been the go-to for hurricane predictions. You'll see local meteorologists make their own predictions, or the Weather Channel will make their own predictions, but Colorado State University uses all the latest scientific data to come up with the best possible prediction. Now, El Nino, which is not favorable for hurricanes in the Atlantic, is almost certain a high chance August to October, right at the peak of hurricane season, 96% prediction uh, of uh, NOAA, from NOAA. 
and a 76% for at least a strong uh, moderate El Nino, 37% chance for a strong. So we're talking almost a near certainty that at the peak of hurricane season, we will be right in an un, in unfavorable El Nino. However, those water temperatures are so warm that even though El Nino has occurred, like Dr. Phil Klotzbach said back on July 6th, the wind pattern should increase the El Nino strength, but the only reason they haven't gone for even more hurricane activity than they're predicting nine hurricanes, four major hurricanes, the only reason that they're not predicting even more is because of the El Nino. But if it weren't for this El Nino, goodness, look at these waters. These are insane water anomalies. These are very, very warm, anomalous, hot waters here for systems developing off Africa. We also have hot water all the way through. As I mentioned, the Florida Keys, I mean, 100 degrees. Come on, that's bath water. That's hotter than a bath water. That's jacuzzi water. So, given a word to the wise, if you were uh, going to be looking over your hurricane plans and uh, checking them out, I would definitely do so, because even though we're predicting an El Nino, these waters are so warm that we could probably still have a lot of storms, and the official forecast from Dr. Klotzbach is for nine hurricanes, of which Don would be one. So that's eight more hurricanes, and as long as Don stays below Category 3, four of them Category 3, 4, or 5, major hurricanes. And the more darts you throw at a dartboard, the more a chance they might hit land. So we've had a long stretch of activity. We had uh, 2017, which was just a tumultuous hurricane season. We had Hurricane Harvey hit Texas as a Category 4 that year. Hurricane Irma hit South Florida as a Category 4 that year. Maria was a Category 4 in Puerto Rico. And then in 2018, we had Hurricane Michael that was a Category 5 in the Panhandle, the first one since Andrew in 92 to hit the U.S., in 2019, we had Dorian as a Category 5 over the Bahamas. Narrowly missed Florida. It could have been an epic disaster for the east coast of Florida. And then 2020, we had Hurricane Laura in Louisiana as a Category 4. In 21, we had Hurricane Ida in Louisiana as a Category 4. And in 22, we had Ian as a Category 4 in Florida. So we have had, in the last seven years, a slew of Category 4 and 5 hurricanes. And we're hoping... That it doesn't happen again, but with those waters, anything's possible. So I'm Mike Naso. That's the latest on the tropics. We'll keep tuned to Hurricane Don and whatever these waves do in the Atlantic as we get closer to August with a busy hurricane season predicted despite a robust El Nino. I'll talk to you guys next time.